Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to care for different types of houseplants, propagate them, and discover new species and take you along with me on this channel. So if you're into that kind of videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel and send me likes. In today's video, I'm going to be recommending some plants that grow really, really fast. They literally grow right before our eyes. Every time you look at the plant, there's a new leaf. And I'm not going to number these plants because I'm not going to stress myself out by limiting the number of species. In fact, I'm just, I just went around the house and just picked up plants that were very, very fast growing. And here they are. I'm gonna walk through them one by one with you and share with you the care and maybe a little bit of the propagation tips. Okay, still, so that was not a comfortable seating position. I just, I guess I'm just going from left to right. Over here, we have the variegated banana. I just got this about three weeks ago and they're famous for being fast grower. And in three weeks time, they've put out two new leaves. So I would definitely recommend this as a fast growing plant. They do need a lot of water. They're very thirsty plants and they do require a lot of fertilizing. They have this really beautiful velvety leaves that is variegated and the non-variegated one would actually grow a lot faster than this. And these guys actually do fruit as well. And the fruit is variegated. So I'm very excited to see that. Next up, we have this Panama hibiscus. And this is a plant that whenever I post it on Instagram, everyone asks me like, oh, what is this? What is this? Well, this is a very, very fast growing plant and it is gifted from me by an fr uh, online friend of mine. I'm going to insert a picture of what the flower looked like. And this plant actually looks much better in uh, real life. And you have to prune it often so that it's not one leggy stem like this. Uh, and they're very, very easy to propagate. You basically just take cuttings and just stick them into soil. You can also water propagate them. They do like full sun though, and they are very, very thirsty plants. They need to be watered once or twice a day. But every time I look at it, a new growth point has appeared. This plant is a very fast grower. I actually got this plant about three months ago and I have so many plants right now. I have propagated so many of them. The reason why I propagated them is because I wanted the older plant to have a very bushy look. So when you cut them, actually, it will start to branch out from underneath, giving you a more fuller looking plant. And over here, we have the ruffle fern. And this one I actually showed you guys in one of my earlier videos that I propagated this uh, fern by root division it's grown so much this is actually one of the propagates it started out as a just a tiny clump of leaves fronds i mean and now it's like this fall this is pretty amazing i'm actually i'm going to break it up even more i'm going to be propagating this some more i have quite a few pots of these too so they're very very satisfying to grow around the house and whenever they grow these fronds they just they're just pretty messy they grow all over the place and it's just really fun to see them scramble around trying to find space for the fronds to grow into Next up, we have the Skindapsis. I believe the Skindapsis here is the Exotica. This is actually just one of my plants. I have many, many of them lying around the house. I cannot move them because they've grown into their space. So I'm going give, to be giving you some B-rolls to show you what they look like. And the Skindapsis Exotica is actually a very fast growing, very easy to care for house plants. They can take bright indirect light. They can also take anywhere uh, with a medium or lower light. They will still survive and they will still push out new growth. However, However, they are a little bit finicky with watering. This one's thirsty right now. The leaves are a little bit limp because we have a really hot day today. But uh, you would only water it when the leaves are curling or when it's still slim because they're very prone to overwatering. If you overwater them, they will give you yellow leaves that fall off. It will be rows and rows of leaves that fall off at the same time. So just be careful with these. Do not overwater them. If I were you, I would keep them a little bit on the underwater side. Next up here, we have the coleus. This is unstoppable. I actually bought a tiny plant, propagated it, and it's now huge. It's become very leggy and I propagated it somewhere. And this is what I have. This is actually third generation within, within four or five months time. They love uh, full sun and they are very, very thirsty. They like to be watered like two to three times a day. They are heavy feeders as well. And very beautiful. Look at the foliage, it's just so stunning. And the new growth point is just so cute. It pulls tiny leaves that expand in size. And this is the plant that really, really grows fast. I mean it. <laughs> Next up, we have the Apischia. And these two are slightly, they look similar, but then they're very different. And they put out these stolons or these pups rather. And then what you can do is you can tuck these back right into the pot. And then it will turn into a whole plant and it will get bigger leaves and it will keep putting out stolons. And I'll actually upsize this soon so that I can keep putting these stolons back into the pot because this is very beautiful when it's in like, um, I would say like a 15 centimeters diameter pot. And when it's full enough on the top, you can just hang it 
on a macrame or whatever and it would be so beautiful look at all these beautiful trailing uh, plantless. The foliage on these are also very very striking if you look at them up close they're actually shiny silvery and the pattern is just so nice and the back is a little bit pink. This is actually becoming one of my favorite plants and they grow really really fast and the way that you would care for it is to give it very very fast draining airy potting mix because they are prone to rot but never let them dry out completely. When you leave them to dry out their leaves would start getting crispy edges and then the leaves would just brown up and die off. So keep them humid a little bit moist and very very airy never like give them compact soil because they will rot and next we have this Tradescantia zebrina and this is a really really common house plant very inexpensive and they grow like a weed they grow so fast in fact this is actually a propagate the main plant is in the nursery and i can't take it out because it's overgrown in space if i if i took it out of its spot i'm gonna yank a lot of the plants out of the way so yeah, this is what I have to show you now. I'm going to give you some b-rolls of what they look like. They're growing non-stop. They propagate so easily. You just cut off anywhere on, along the stem and just stick them back into the potting mix. Just leave them be. They will root very quickly and they will grow very quickly. Unfortunately, the zebrinas, they do tend to get leggy and they tend to trail down. So they will get a little bit of balding spots in the older stem. What you can do is just keep cutting the top cuttings and the bald stem would actually start branching out. They will put out shoots. So if you want a bushy plant, you need to always propagate the uh, Tradescantia zebrina. Next up, we have the Syngonium. This is, I believe, the Syngonium. This is the Syngonium podophyllum. This is actually one of the most common Syngoniums. And I, if you give them bright light, they will push up these uh, more variegation. If you pull them away from light, they will give you more green. So it's very fun to have. This is actually a juvenile form that I propagated because the main plants are all over the house and they're getting huge. And I can't, again, I can't take them down because they will drag other plants down with them from the rack. So I'll show you those images. But this is a very, very forgiving plant, easy to care for. You, very hard to overwater it. They can take a little bit of overwatering and they can take a little bit of drought as well. And they can take anywhere from some direct sunlight to medium indirect light. Very forgiving plant, very fast grower. Next we have this begonia and actually a few begonias are quite fast grower. The maculata is pretty fast growing but I don't think it holds a candle to this particular begonia. I believe this is called the Arabian sunset. And this one actually is a propagate. I have quite a few of them around the nursery. So how what you would do is you just cut the stem off, stick them in water first, and they will root very fast in water. Two to three weeks should be enough. Or we can stick it directly into my forest floor potting mix here, which is a very airy potting mix, and it will turn into a full plant. And whenever you cut it off, the bottom nodes will actually activate and they will branch out and they become a much bushier plant. This is a really, really fast growing begonia. And in the morning when I get some direct sunlight, this whole plant glows in red. It's so beautiful. Like the, the rim around here will glow in a beautiful red. I'm going to insert some pictures so you can see what it looks like. And this is a really beautiful black foliage. Very, very shiny and black with very beautiful blood red. Uh, underside of the leaves and the stem. This is a truly remarkable plant. I'm surprised that this is not hyped up as it is. Very, very fast grower. As you can see here, it's putting out a lot of multiple growth points at the same time. And I'm going to be propagating it some more, of course, because I want many of these. Next, we have a philodendron, and this is the philodendron micans. This is a really, really unstoppable philodendron. This is a propagate. I have cut up the parent plant into many, many pots and they are starting to take off. And once they have established, it's just gotta be nonstop growing. This plant likes medium light to bright indirect light. This particular one actually give it a little bit of direct sunlight. And as you can see, it's giving me this beautiful red blush and they do fade, fade into a green color, like a dark green color over time. So if you acclimatize your plant, you propagate them and you have them grown in stronger light, they can adapt to that light. But this plant actually prefers bright indirect light and it can withstand medium uh, indirect light. Do not overwater these because they will give you a lot of yellowing leaves that fall off. They don't really need a lot of water, these guys. As you can see here, there's actually a lot of growth. Every point here is growing right now. So I believe that in a few months time, I'm going to have to start propagating this pot too because it's, it's just out of control the way they trail down. It's just too crazy for me to handle. And next up, we have a camphiria here. And I believe I have two types of camphirias in my care. They have really beautiful calathea-like pattern on their leaves. And if you're trying to guess if they are related or not, 
they are. This is probably closely related to ginger. I bought this as a tiny plant about three months ago. It was only like about three leaves. And look at how much it's grown. And the other species of Camphiria has also grown a lot. It's putting out, I don't know, three to five leaves at any given time. These are very, very fast growers. They have thick leaves, leathery leaves, very beautiful markings. This is much easier to grow than your Calatheas and it's just as stunning with the foliage. So I highly recommend this. I have this grown in terracotta pot and my forest floor potting mix and I water it every day lightly. So this is kept very humid but never wet because this is also very prone to rot. Next we have the Adansonii. This one in my hand is the variegated Adansonii. I'm gonna have a video on this soon. But Adansonii are really really fast grower. They are always putting out new leaves at any given time. They take over my space so quickly. They like very bright indirect light, do not give them medium light because they don't have a lot of leaf surface to photosynthesize. They really would appreciate any light that you can give it. But if you give it afternoon direct sunlight or full sun, it will burn. And because they don't have a lot of leaf surface, they also don't need a lot of water. They don't consume that water. So if you overwater your Edisonii, it's gonna give you yellow leaves that fall off. So do not overwater them, keep them on the drier side. So this is a very satisfying plant and it, I really love that each leaf is different in shape and size. And if you allow them to climb up a moss pole, they will get bigger and bigger leaves. And if you let them trail down, they will give you smaller and smaller leaves. So you have two options for growth pattern on these. They look really good in a hanging basket too. This is crazy. I've propagated so many of these. I have a video coming out soon, probably by the time this video releases. And this one is actually one of the plants that I propagated. I have a parent plant that I have, I'll show you some B-roll of. It's unstoppable, it's so big, and it keeps putting out new leaves and it's getting pretty tall. So unlike the Anthurium clarinervium, which it looks very similar to, the clarinervium actually grows really slow, but this guy grows really, really fast. It will put out sometimes three to five leaves at one go, and the new leaves would come out with tiny red color leaves they're very very cute baby leaves and then they will expand in size and turn into this beautiful green and it's gonna get, have this pink rim around it when it's a young leaf but it's pink rim i believe goes away as it matures stunning plant and very easy to care for i give it aerate potting mix terracotta pot and i top dress it with sphagnum moss and i just water this every day this is outdoors if you have it indoors you want to water it less they basically do not let your anthuriums dry out completely. They like their roots to be chunk, uh, grabbing onto something chunky like an arid potting mix. And they like it to be humid, never dry, never wet, just humid. And next up we have a Boston fern here. Oh, this is heavy, I'm not gonna lift it up. But this Boston fern is about one year old and this is what it looks like one year ago. <laughs> this plant was this small about a year ago and you can see here, it's putting out this cute baby fronds. It's growing nonstop. It keeps putting out new fronds. And all it's asked for is very, very bright light. I even give it a little bit of direct sunlight and very, very frequent watering. I just water this every day without even thinking about it. They cannot be left to dry out. And I don't even know if it's even possible to overwater ferns. I haven't heard that before, but I do give them water every day, but in the condition that they live outdoors and in bright, bright, bright light. And these can also be propagated by these runners, by the way. I used to think that these are just roots, but they do trail down. And if you tuck them into a different pot and uh, bury them, these ends will turn into fern fronds and turn, basically turn into a whole new plant. And you can cut these off later when it's propagated into another pot, and then they will multiply that way. This is so cool. This is a very easy plant to propagate. They also do well with uh, root division, so you can divide them by the roots into many, many plants. And they are so satisfying. They're growing really, really fast. It's a joy to watch every morning that there's always something new that is trying to unfurl. Very, very good companion of mine. And last but not least is this guy here. I believe I did a video on this plant about, I don't know, man, maybe five or six months. I, I lost track, I have so many videos now. But this is the pineapple plant. So if you haven't checked out this video, do check it out. And I show you this plant when it was actually about I don't know how big it was. I actually propagated this from an actual pineapple, store-bought pineapple. So you can imagine a store-bought pineapple would be about this big and its top here, the crown, would only be about, I don't know, like this big maybe. It grew so much. This is crazy. It overtook its space. This is about, again, about five to six months old and it's still growing. I can see more. I'm actually very terrified of it. It's always like trying to poke me. It's got very sharp uh, edges and very serrated uh, leaves so this is actually quite dangerous to have around if you have kids 
but I believe that in about another year or so, it's going to start putting out a baby pineapple that is edible. So I'm going to be uh, waiting for that. This is a free plan and I'm really happy I got it. I'm really happy that I propagated it and I hope that you guys do give it a shot of propagating pineapples and growing them. They do like very, very bright in direct light and some direct sunlight. Very thirsty plants. Just I just water it lightly every day. I give it a general purpose potting mix that's abandoned with perlite and a terracotta pot, which means it's going to dry out pretty fast. So these are the house plants that are fast growing that are in my collection. Of course, I don't represent every house plants in the world. If you have any recommendations for house plants that grow really fast in your condition and in your collection, please do comment down below. I'm sure some of us will be interested to know. And since we're all locked down in our homes, it's really nice to have plants that are constantly growing, putting out something new every single day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm at botanist on Instagram if you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.